Hello, I am Hex8, and this is my third and final presentation for Major 2020-2021. So this module has been going on since January, post the Christmas break, and it's by far been the longest module of the entire course. Um, so owing to the fact that this module is so long, it requires the most content and the most amount of work put into it than ever before. Uh, the topic that I chose to do this module on was about migrants who move away from home to majority English speaking nations and after moving why they feel that, like they need to act white or behave and speak in a certain way as to pander to a white society and culture. I also looked at the other side of this project where when these migrants talk to their families or friends back home, how they get told by them that they have had a change in accent or that they're putting on an accent and just that the way that they speak has changed, including the fact that they've probably forgotten or are starting to forget certain things in their mother tongue because they've been away from home for so long. Um, so the main focus of this project was basically about whether or not my subjects and the people who were in it suffer and struggle with the loss of sense of self and identity uh, the longer that they move away from home? Or do they kind of hope to find a balance the longer that they're away and the older that they grow, given that they have to be a part of both cultures? So that was basically the idea behind the project and what I tried to answer, the question I tried to answer. Um, so this idea basically stemmed from my own personal experience here in Cardiff after I moved here four years ago. Um, so given that this project is quite a personal one, I decided to include a part of my own experience in my introduction so as to give people an insight into what people like me and also my subjects in the book go through after moving away from home. This project definitely evolved and grew a lot over the last five months in terms of research and the content produced. And also, since it has been going on for five months, the more and more I interacted with people and the more and more I spoke to my subjects and researched more on the topic, the more ideas I had and it just grew a lot more then. So when I first started producing the content for my book, I was really unsure of how I wanted it to look visually because this topic is such a personal one and it's about the person and their experience. I wanted to make it look as personable to each and every subject as possible. So I wanted to give every one of them individual attention. But because of COVID-19 and the restrictions due to it, I could not really shoot the way I wanted to. Um, so I kind of, I was limited to socially distant shoots but luckily I managed to find a way to make it work. Um, I used a mix of full-length portraits, close-up portraits and landscapes to do all my shoots. Um, my interview was completely catered to understanding my subjects, where they are from, the languages they speak, the change in the way that they speak and also their familial interactions along with the struggle of the loss of sense of self and identity. Um, I also covered whether or not these subjects have a fear of drifting away from their culture, given that they've been away from home for so long and they're going to be away for a while as well. Um, because, again, since this, is pro this project is a personal one, this all stems from my own fears. <laughs> but luckily, through the research and through the interview of the project, I managed to prove that this, in fact, is a thing that all of us do go through. Here I've given a couple of examples of how my shooting style evolved. So on the left is one of the first shoots that I did with the subject. And this was when I was still trying to find how to represent the person and the place where they come from and where they are now. So on the left, I just kind of shot my subject in a park. But then after doing a lot of thinking about it and mulling over it quite a bit, I decided to shoot my project in a way where I have the person stood or sat right outside where they live now so as to show where they've come from and where they are now. Uh, this is another example of how the shooting style evolved. So there are a few changes that I wish to make to my book now that it's submitted before I print it. 
Um, some of them are like, I want to change the cover photo and the color of it so that it's not just a bland black and white project. I want to add a subtitle to the topic home because even though home does give the sense and the feel behind the project, I think it needs a little more. I want to add more pictures. I also want to change the back cover and obviously collect, correct any spelling or grammar mistakes. Um, I'm not sure about an index yet, but I might add that too. Another change that I'm unsure about is whether or not to reduce the number of my subjects in my book, simply because as much as the text does give the reader the story, I think it gets very repetitive after a point, especially since there's 20 people saying the same thing. Even though their experiences are different, um, their answers are more or less similar. So this is something that I do need to figure out. Um, so the reason I decided to do a book for home instead of any other format was because it's a very serious and heavy topic and no other format would really give it the weight, I feel. Um, so that's also why, because I wanted to give each subject individual attention, I decided to do a book. The dimensions I, do, I used for my book were 6 inches in width and 8.5 inches in height. I did this after researching and using actual physical photo books as well. And then I found that Amanda Herlick's photo book, Travelling in India, worked really well and fit the vision for the book really well. So I photographed my content um, accordingly and also edited my text with that in mind as well. Um, the layout was pretty basic, given that the images and the text alternate from side to side with each subject, it was really easy to put together on InDesign. Um, again, I am aware that the text is rather heavy and gets repetitive, so I do hope to change that and edit it down further before printing. So basically, I went about this topic um, in a very interesting way. So when I initially started out with deciding what I wanted to do, I had an entirely different subject matter in mind but unfortunately that topic fell apart because shooting that would have been next to impossible with COVID-19 and its restrictions. However I am really glad that I had to change my project because not only is my topic something that I'm personally connected to and interested in but I also think it's a really perfect way to sum up my time here and my experience in this country and doing university here. Um, it is also the exact kind of work that I want to do and this is exactly why I got into photojournalism because this is the kind of stories that I want to tell and I hope to now more in the future. Um, obviously I could have shot this project way differently if it wasn't for COVID but I think it still worked out pretty well in spite of that restriction. Um, the interview was not something that I had to worry about too much and came together pretty well and my subjects were absolutely lovely and worked with me so well and also given again that this is such a personal matter to each and every one of us I am so grateful for them to be like so honest and so open with me and so willing to share their experiences with me. Um, when it came to editing the final book I obviously had a very clear picture in my mind of what I wanted it to look like and the message I wanted it to tell. So there were a few hurdles I had to overcome in the editing process mainly when it came to editing my text down. But this was also something that I think I had a personal mental barrier doing because I wanted to give each and every subject a very individual um, look and feel in the book that I did get a bit lost with how much I should have included and should not included in their interviews. But I do hope that I can change that before I print and I also hope to add a lot more images now since it is a photo book and not really an, uh, like a Q&A interview kind of book. So yeah, that's definitely a change that I hope to make. So in conclusion, however challenging this project has been and however challenging this course has been, I am so grateful for this project because it's not only been a learning curve but it's been a huge growth point for me personally and professionally in my skills as a photojournalist. Um, I am extremely proud and very happy with the book that I produced and I hope that from now on my storytelling skills and photography skills can only grow. Um, I have grown with my project and it's evolved as I have as well so I am glad that I got to prove my topic and I got to actually see 
my work come to life not only through my subjects but also through what I learn from each and every one of them. I am also so so super grateful to all my subjects for being so amazingly cooperating, accommodating and just open and honest with me about everything that it, it just it made me feel complete and it made the project look and feel complete as well. So yeah, I hope that I can produce more work like this from now on and only get better from now on in the future, but thank you and thank you for all your guidance throughout these four years. I am extremely grateful for tutors like you and for mentors like you and I hope to constantly receive your guidance and your help in the future as well. Thank you.